Come on. Oh, man. There's nothing more frustrating than troubleshooting electrical issues in a car. And traditionally, we've done it with a multimeter or a probe light. But there are more modern ways of doing it, one of it being the power probe. Now, the power probe can be a little bit expensive. So in this episode, I thought I'd show you an alternative, more affordable version, the KC KM10 Super Probe. Now, this does almost everything that the Power Probe can do for a fraction of the cost. Now, some of the things that you can do with this probe is eliminating a flashlight because it has a built-in flashlight. And we can also look for opens, where is when a wire has broken. Or we can look for shorts, where two wires that are not supposed to be in contact with each other are now touching each other or touching uh, the body of the car. We can also look for good grounds or bad grounds. So first, let me show you what you get with the tool, what the tool looks like and accessories that come with it. Then I'll walk you through the features that the tool offers so you can get an idea if this is something that could be useful to you. Particularly, it has been very useful for me. It has saved me a lot of time troubleshooting cars. And if you're interested in looking further at this tool, I have placed a link in the description for you below. So with that said, let's get started. So here's what you get with the Kaisi KM 10 vehicle super probe everything comes in nicely packaged in a nice little plastic case now after undoing the latches it reveals the contents first off you have the meter itself in a bright orange so as good as going to stand that we're not going to mis misplace that now the actual meter has a cord attached to it that is about 20 feet in length so quite a bit enough length for us to reach any location in our car that is testing and we have the actual probe itself. And we gotta be careful because this is very sharp. Uh, the probe gets inserted into here and the trick to this is to make sure it fully locks in place. There you go, now it locks in place, it's not gonna fall out. The meter itself has two little LED lights, a nice LCD screen and an up and down button which we'll cover in a little bit and a single button right here for changing modes. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. You also get this and this is how we're going to attach this or power our probe this is going to connect to our vehicle battery and then it's going to provide the 12 volt power all the way up to 24 volt power supply needed to run the meter we could also run it off the cigarette lighter so that's convenient that they included this and i like again that this nice and bright orange color so we're not going to misplace that and then finally, if you have a very long vehicle, such as a trailer or a very long truck, they include another 20 foot long extension. So if you add up the length of the cable in here and the extension, you have a total reach of 40 feet. That's a lot of reach. I don't think we're gonna need any more than that. And finally, this is an instruction manual which covers the features of the tool and how to use it. Okay, I'm gonna power up the Super Probe and I have connected the alligator clip attachment to the probe. And then all I have to do is connect these alligator clips to the battery terminals. Obviously the black goes to the black and the red goes to the red. Now, as you saw, the tool might have flickered a little because I was connecting the probes and it fired up correctly this time, but there I seen reports online where people said it freezes and you have to play with the alligator clips until you get it to turn on. So the best way I found out or I discovered to boot up this tool perfectly is to connect the alligator clips first and then connect this in one shot. If I connect this like that, the tool automatically boots up without any of that freezing uh, issues that I have seen reported. And that's because again, we're, if we're connecting something and you're plugging it and unplugging it, trying to wiggle it, it throws off the boot up sequence. But by having the alligators plugged in first and then connecting this, it seems like it boots up correctly every single time. Now let's look at the menu. By default, you can see that we have a color screen, but this is not really need for color. All we're looking at numbers and symbols. So yeah, it's kind of nice this color, but not really needed. Now we do have the two LEDs that I mentioned earlier, and they're pretty bright and they're very convenient when you're underneath the car or in, let's say, underneath uh, an area that is really dark, it really lights up your way and frees up your hand from having to carry a flashlight. In the first menu, you have voltage. And that means that it's basically acting as a multimeter. And if I press up, I'm gonna be able to see what the actual voltage reading of the battery is. 
In this case, it's telling me that I have 12.2 volts. Now, let's go to the next option. If I press the bottom button right here, that's gonna change mode. This mode is quite interesting because on this mode, you're able to sense any kind of sensor that has an alternating current or an alternating voltage. Uh, some, uh, if not all, oxygen sensors alternate like that. And if you were to probe those with this, it would actually start to graph every time the voltage goes up and down, voltage goes up and down. And it will tell you also what the lowest voltage and highest voltage recorded was. Okay, and I'm gonna go to the next one. This is one of uh, my favorite options to use, and this is the resistance. The resistance comes in very handy. However, in my opinion, this is not a replacement for a multimeter. And this is what I mean. For example, I have here, this is a two ohm resistor. And if I wanna measure this two ohm resistor, I will connect the ground wire here, and then I will probe the front. Oops, let me try that again. Okay, stay there, okay? And I get a reading of zero ohms. So this is not really able to come down, down to two ohms, even though it's advertised as being zero to 100 K ohms. Now that might, we might not need that kind of resolution or for it to go down that low. Here I have a 100 ohm resistor and I'm gonna connect the 100 ohm resistor and let's see what we get. And yeah, sure enough, 100, ohms, 0.4, 100 and 0.4, so that's pretty close. So this is gonna work well if you're measuring larger resistance. The smaller resistance, probably not too well. For example, this oxygen sensor, and in the heater circuit, we typically have about eh, maybe three to five ohms, and I'm gonna check that here. And the meter claims zero ohms. And I suspect what the meter is doing, the meter is probably checking and telling me anything less than 10 ohms, I'm gonna beep and I'm gonna say, yeah, 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 it's good to go. And I can confirm that with my voltmeter here. I have a voltmeter here and we'll set that to ohms. And then I'm, I'm gonna connect that in the same way that I had the probe connected to my oxygen sensor. And yep, sure enough, this confirms that my sensor heater is working correctly because I have five ohms. So I was able to measure that with my, with my mold meter. I was not able to measure that with this. So if you're looking to measure resistances less than maybe five or around 10 ohms, this is probably not gonna be a replacement for that. But anything above that all the way to 100 K ohms, it should be fine for that application. Now let's also look at the next menu here. The next menu allows us to test diodes. If you're dealing with anything that has a diode, you would wanna go to this menu. And I have a sample diode right here that we can play with. And I'm gonna connect the ground lead to the side of the diode that has the little black line, which indicates that's how it should be connected correctly. And if this diode works, we should be able to measure a drop in voltage here. And yep, sure enough, we have the forward voltage drop. So this is a good diode. And if I turn it around, I can confirm if a diode has been installed backwards or if, if this diode, again, if, if it uh, was not working, now it's backwards and we should get no reading. And sure enough, we have no reading. So this is testing diodes correctly. Very helpful during uh, any kind of electrical testing in automotive circuits. Now, probably the best feature of this tool is gonna be the fact that you can power up any item on the car as long as you are able to get this tool to it. And like I said, with 40 feet of length, that's quite a bit of reach. Now, let's say I have a headlight that I'm trying to troubleshoot and I don't know if, it, if it's getting power. And let's, let's, let's not talk about a headlight, maybe a tail light all the way to the back of the car. If I wanna power that tail light up and see it light up, I'm gonna have to connect power to those two leads and then run those wires all the way to the back of my car. And I might not even have those power cables available. So instead I have my tool hooked up, I have my, my tail light, and all I do is I connect the little ground lead to the tail light. And then with the tip, I can connect or I can contact. And there we go. And we can confirm that the tail light works. Now this is only gonna light it up for a period of time until the circuit breaker trips. And then you have to wait for it to cool down before it self reset. So that's a very convenient way of testing fans, light bulb, anything that needs power applied to it. Now the tip on the front, 
uh, is very nice and pointy and that is very helpful if you're piercing wires. Uh, and that's convenient because if you don't want to strip a wire and you just want to probe it, you can pierce the insulation of the wire and you can get a reading. So that's pretty good. Now again, remember, you got to remember the price point of this tool. A power probe is a lot more than this tool. So interesting super probe. I'll put a link on the description if you guys are interested in getting one of these things. Um, if you, let me know if you guys have any questions about the tool or what your experience with this tool is. And make sure you subscribe as I have more reviews uh, for car enthusiasts like yourself. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.